Hey, how's everybody doing? Welcome to the show. I'm your host. This is the weekly beer and video review show with me, Travel Man Dan, a.k.a. Reading Man Dan, a.k.a. Movie Man Dan. You can call me Danny if you like. Welcome to the show. It is going to be an awesome show. We got a lot of fun things to do. We got a lot of fun drinks to drink. And it is going to be just a fun show. Thank you so much for joining us. Whether you're a regular Junatic, love and light, welcome, welcome. Well, whether you're a, a regular like Junatic or this is your first time on the show, thanks for joining me. Let me tell you a little bit about what we do. This is the weekly beer and video review show. So we go ahead and we review two delicious beers. And I got some outstanding beers. Welcome, everybody. I got some outstanding beers today. And then we talk about the videos that came out last week on my channel. And we preview the videos that come out this week on my channel. All while bringing in a fun segment of all kinds of fun stuff. I'll always try to attend to your uh, comments. We got some segments like, what would you rather? I have a segment called This Day in History. A show and tell segment that's always fun. And we wrap it up with, what are you reading? Yes, Carlos Z, thank you so much. We wrap it up with a little bit of, uh, what are you reading? What are you watching? And then close it out with a quote uh oh, today is going to be a fun show i got some great stuff yes welcome to the show frank and um you know it's going to be uh a little bit changing a little bit more interesting uh let's see the projected date i believe is the 21st so the 21st of march we have two more weeks we're going to be bringing some guests on we're going to be bringing in a new segment called eat it or not i believe it's called or uh would you eat it or not <laughs> and good buddy nate is going to be on the show and we're going to bring a whole uh history buff uh, BC, welcome, Dr. Seuss, Roberta Bayas, welcome, Fred Carlos. Um, so, look forward to that, but welcome to this show. We're going to have some good times. We got some delicious beers, and let me go ahead and introduce the first beer. Today, we got a little wacky. We're trying something a little bit different here. I don't know um, how I feel about this one. I'm interested in it. I always enjoy beers when I'm traveling, and uh, that's kind of how this show evolved. If you're new to my channel and you're new to what I do, uh, I have a bunch of different shows, but this particular weekly beer show kind of evolved because I love beer, I love traveling, and when I travel, I always stop in for some local beer, whether it's in Denmark or I'm in Asia somewhere, South America, or just somewhere cool <laughs> in the um, United States. I definitely like to center um, a lot of my vacation around uh, night nightly drinking beer so some beers you know you come across and you're really curious about like today's first beer today today i don't know how to pronounce it so if you're from this country if um, i'm pronouncing it wrong forgive me but guys i want to introduce you guys to this one that we're going to be doing and um it is a uh I believe it's a stout. I'm, I'm looking for it. Some of it's written in English. Some of it's written in Ukraine. So let me just go ahead and whip it up here and show you. We're going to be doing this one. The Chorn, I think it's called. I, or I have no idea how you pronounce it. But it is a Ukrainian beer. It is 7%. Okay, definitely going to be strong. And, um, well, it says, uh, for people as for yourself. I don't know what that means, but sometimes you get a lot of wacky lost in translation things. It is um, a dark lager beer, so it's probably going to be pretty black in color. I'm looking at some other things. This is a series of Ukrainian special style beer brewed with passions and diligence in order to deliver maximum enjoyment. Oh, I like that. An original taste to those who love beer as much as I do. And I believe that's from the owner of this company. But, um, you know, I'm not really sure too much about it. Um, yes, I don't, I, Carlos Z, are you Ukrainian? I don't know about this one, but let's go ahead and crack it open, pour it into the cup, and give it a shot. Everybody's welcome here. All beers are worth trying here on the review show. So we're going to go ahead and crack the top of this sucker. All right, okay, first sniff. <clears throat> I kind of imagine a cross between... Uh, a strong uh, stout and a bit of a lager but let's go ahead and pour it in who's guessing what i'm gonna say it's pitch black let's see what happens oh yeah there it is take a look at that that multi goodness 
That is a dark beer. That is a beer worth drinking. It's almost got the same look of a Guinness or maybe even a Pepsi or a root beer. It is dark in color and it's got a little bit of foam on the top. Nice head carbonation. As I take a big whiff of it. Well, it's got, hey, Barrow, welcome to the show, my man. Um, it's got a very sweet taste of it. A very sweet malt aroma coming off it. Stuart, what's up? Are we going to get drunk today? Let's do it, Stuart. Let's do it. I got nothing to do the rest of the day. We might as well get wasted. <laughs> now, if you are um, watching this and maybe you came over from the children's book section, listen, this is what I do. I review beers and have fun. So, uh, yeah, it, you know, disregard that last bit. We're going to just drink and review beers. Hey, Tenacious Freak, welcome to the show. We are drinking a dark one. Yeah, Carlos, this is pretty thick. This is what we're drinking. I'm not sure how it's tasting. It's from Ukraine. Let's go ahead and take a, a big sip of the sucker. Ah, oh, that's good. That is really good. Um, it's got a very sweet malt flavor to it, okay? Um, I don't know if I would consider that a lager. What, what I'm used to drinking as a lager, that is much darker. But it definitely has a sweet malty taste, almost like a, a caramel flavor. A little light. It's definitely a really complex. There's a lot of different flavors going on in there. Um, yeah, I can't really make out exactly what some of the other flavors are, uh, but it is tasty. I know that that region of Eastern Europe really prides themselves, like Poland, Czech Republic, uh, all throughout Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. They really pride themselves on strong beer and uh, black beer. So really keeping on par with their tradition. It's a nice beer and a very good first sip. All right, woohoo, Poland. Yes, Greg C's in the house. Welcome. All right, we still got some. All right, I'm, I'm glad that you're here, guys. We've got some of my favorite people here. Thank you so much. We've got seven people in the room. If you haven't already, be sure to go ahead and hit that like button. What that like does is the more times, I've explained this before, but I'm going to keep doing it so you may hear it again. But, you know, what the like does is it basically tells the YouTube algorithm, look, people are watching this thing for the duration of the show, enjoying a beer, having a good time, going back and forth, commenting, okay, definitely provides engagement, but the like shows that they like it. The more likes, the more comments, the longer the duration of the video. This is how YouTube works in its simple form. They go ahead and promote it. So any bit of support, any bit of share, any bit of like, all that good stuff definitely helps me grow. Uh, now, there's still some stuff on my end that I have to do. I have to continue to create. But don't worry. We got some really fun stuff going. I've mentioned it before. We're going to be doing show and tell. I'm bringing it to you guys out there. And you guys get first crack at it. So if you have something that you want to bring to the table starting March 21st, let me know on my Instagram account or Facebook. Just shoot me a direct message. And I'll go ahead and I'll send you a link. And we'll be able to set you up so that you're part of the show and the show and tell just keep it you know um don't do anything disgusted don't do anything perverted nobody wants to see that you know we have fun we swear we drink and stuff like that but there's also a line that we don't like to cross but i am offering it to you guys first if you want to be a part of the show and tell if you don't that's fine too i'm still going to be bringing in fun people from all over the world all right so guys now i want to get right into and girls yes and girls i'm sorry yes okay don't think you want to see my thing. Well, Greg, see, no, I don't. Uh, like I said, let's keep it clean. Um, but hey, guys, uh, guys and girls, okay, let's talk about the videos that came out last week because what, the, what do you know? It popped up all over the news, okay? If you haven't heard or if you haven't seen, my last week videos were all Dr. Seuss books. Okay, starting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I put out a five-series playlist for Dr. Seuss Week. I know, very topical. Who would have known? Um, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know however you want to look at this, 
uh, on the day of Dr. Seuss's birthday is also considered Read Across America. Well, the company that is Dr. Seuss that goes and puts out Dr. Seuss books. They keep the business running, all, all the stuff that you can imagine. Went ahead and announced that they will be discontinuing six Dr. Seuss books because of, well, you know, uh, because of racist kind of ways that the book was written. It portrays a lot of things in there. And, um, well, they just they decided to go ahead and just stop printing and selling those books. Ah, uh, thank you, Drunatic. I love to read them. It's crazy because we're gonna get into it in a minute, but I want to get on this as long as we're on to the Dr. Seuss thing. Now, I had no idea, right? And here's the thing: is Dr. Seuss was exactly the opposite. He was like a a, a crazy left wing liberal, right? He was um he was not racist. He used his books to go ahead and write about how um being different is actually really the same thing. Like in uh Sneetches, uh I think that was one of the books that was taken off. Now, some of the books like um what I his very first book, uh The Things I See on Mulberry Street was taken off because of the drawings that he had drew um the t uh, you know, kind of just making like um uh, a stereotypical African American, or uh, I, I hear the word being thrown a lot in the news now, called or like Orientalism, and he drew a lot of uh, you know Orientals, and, and people are taking that offensive. Now, to go ahead and because um, I know what you're thinking, the woke society, whatever the hell they're called, or the cancel culture, but to get ahead of that, actually, Dr. Seuss's company got ahead of it, and they decided to cancel the books. So I find it really strange, but, you know, maybe they foresaw some things that were in the news prior to that. Because if you go back a few years, people had complained about this thing before with Dr. Seuss. Um, like I said, I don't really know Dr. Seuss. All I know is the joy that he brought. He also wrote these books in 1940. Okay, so the times were quite different. It was almost 100 years ago, right? So... You know, things have changed. I like to see Dr. Seuss still being read, and I'm going to continue to read his books. And if anything, I look back at how much we've evolved in, as a culture and society that we don't do things like that. And, um, you know, I think, I think you know, who does it right is maybe Looney Tunes. <clears throat> when you watch a Looney Tunes cartoon or whatever, they have a little disclaimer, a little thing that's saying, you know, uh, the things that you will see in this cartoon were you know, made 75 years ago and things were different, this kind of thing. Um, I don't think that Dr. Seuss should be completely canceled because of how good, how much good he brought to children, whether uh, he learned uh, how to, he taught people how to read, hello, Calvin, and all the good stuff, but it's just a really weird timing. But if you haven't seen any of those uh, uh, videos, make sure you go back and check it out, my playlist. I did one, the first one was called Dr. Seuss, the great doodler, who, which was about Ted Geisel, the actual, the real Dr. Seuss, and his story. I'm already offended by you because you're still talking, not drinking. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Exactly. All right. On Greg's request, because we missed you for a while, Greg, silly that to protect us. Just like, exactly. Exactly. That's, I mean, it's just, it's just ludicrous. But this is what we're drinking. It is a Ukrainian beer. I cannot wait to go to live. Uh, that's the comment of the day. Exactly. I agree, Frank. It's crazy how they think they have to protect us. We already know this shit. Okay? Like, let it be. Like, why are you putting it out there, right? Um, anyway, let's go ahead and drink. Greg, good to see you. Drunatic, awesome comment. And uh, this is what we're drinking. Yeah, it's a, it's a very strange beer. Because your first sip of it is that underlying lager flavor that that really common beer that you start off with that light uh, like kind of multi uh, basic cereal grain beer right but then this thing i don't know if they roast the malts they add some kind of other uh like barrel flavored or, or if it's kept in a barrel but it's got a really really distinct sweetness to it and it really kind of brings in the beer it's uh it's definitely strong as you can see 
I'm already starting to get a little red. The Pompeii is going to start happening. And um, we got some strong beers today. You know, what the hell? It's Sunday. I got a lot of shit done this week. And um, I want to celebrate. So, guys, this beer is good. If you get a chance to check out my Dr. Seuss videos, check them out. I'm going to try to read all 44 Dr. Seuss books at some point on my channel. Um, Reading Man Dan is now coming close to almost a year in existence. Okay, I'm working on drawing and drinking some Sierra. Nice, torpedoes are good over the... Thanks for beer with us. Yes. No, Frank, thank you, man. Because it's weird. Like, I think about it all the time. I'm like, man, are these guys ever going to just give up and quit on me not show up? But I don't think you are. And it's, it, it's so gratifying and satisfying as I continue to grow... Um, that I build relationships here on YouTube and I, you know, I'm not going to forget these beginning years when you look at like really successful YouTubers and stuff like that. Uh, the, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a climb, right? And we're not even like middle way to the peak. And because I have you guys, yeah, Nate's in the house because I have you guys to, to, to be here and support me each and every week. I cannot express the gratitude what it means to me as I continue to grow and um, we'll see what happens but um, it, it's it's like the finished product is going to feel so good not only for me but but being able to say thank you to you guys because you guys were here in the beginning so that means a lot appreciate it Frank all right moving on from the Dr. Seuss thing now we're going to talk a little bit because Greg likes to talk about the uh, the, the COVID-19 <laughs> looks like the U.S will be completely vaccinated. Um, I don't know what that means, but uh, in May, okay? Or at least uh, have enough by the end of May. Now, I think I was talking to a doctor friend of mine uh, that you need about 80% of the people in your population to be vaccinated in order for it to be effective. So hopefully by the end of May, we'll have 80% of people vaccinated. We'll be able to continue. I have heard that test four times already. I got y'all. <laughs> okay. Have you gotten the vaccination? Anyway, has anybody gotten vaccinated out there? Let me know down in the comments below. How you feeling? What does it feel like? Uh, do you have a third eye? How about 11 fingers? Anything strange? Or do you feel completely normal? Do you feel safer? I'd like to hear from you guys out there. If you're just hopping on, like my buddy Nate, we are drinking the Ukrainian Trone. Look at this bottle, man. This thing is awesome. Oh, hell no vaccine. Okay. All right. That, that, it's your decision. Like It's all good. But um, here's the thing. Um, no, thank you. I want to heal myself. Okay. Got it. Got it. On March 11th, so that will be uh, next Thursday, on March 11th, not yet low supplies here in Minnesota. Okay, yeah, same here in California. I'm going to go ahead and get it, but I respect your decision if you don't want to get it. Um, the reason I want to get it so bad is I feel like it's going to be necessary in order to fly uh, to other countries. And as soon as this stuff kind of settles down... We're going to get some sweet travel, Dan. Now I want to get all the vaccines. <laughs> yeah, another beer. I'm going to be travel man, Dan, and up like crazy. Um, like I said, the pandemic really threw us into a tizzy. And it. Um, I had a whole slate last year. So speaking of last year, March 11th will mark the one-year anniversary where the World Health Organization... Uh, declared COVID-19 a global pandemic, okay? It's uh, the very first uh, since the designation of declaring, remember that H1N1 flu in two, or 2009? So obviously this one's a lot more severe, a lot more deaths, a lot more longevity. It really stuck around and it's not over yet. But uh, on, on Thursday, just keep in mind that that was the day the World Health Organization announced that the pandemic, uh, that this was a global pandemic. So I had a whole slate planned for last year. We weren't able to do it, but we did evolve and we did go ahead and create another show like Reading Man Dan, and I'm absolutely loving it. I got more in depth here on the beer show, so that's a plus. But as soon as this stuff is ready to roll, I'm out of here, dude. I'm going to go travel some stuff. I want to go to Hawaii. I want to do some more um, uh, Nevada and Arizona. And we'll probably stay in the western states as planned from last year. But uh, I'm looking at 2022 doing some overseas travels. I know they're talking about the Vax Passport here also, but I still say no. I mean, 
Juno Tick, it, it is completely your decision. You will never get any flack from me. You'll, I'll never be like, oh, you're an anti-vaxxer and things like that. I will never be that with anybody. It's your body. Um, you have the right to do what you want with it. Uh, science is science, and that's what they say. And and that doesn't necessarily mean you're okay with it. And so, like, you're completely fine with me. Um, I hope that everyone has that open mind. And some people choose not to do it. That's plain and simple. Okay? All right, moving right along. Hopefully you guys are pretty good with that. We went over the whole Dr. Seuss debacle. You know what's strange is... I thought putting all these Dr. Seuss videos up, at least being in the news and whatever, good news is bad news is good, not only all news, whatever, my videos didn't ex exactly break out the way that they were supposed to. But I got to tell you, I'm growing 100% organically. I do not pay for any marketing. I do not do anything to go ahead and boost my subscribers, my views, anything like that. So I'm growing it organically. Um... I thought maybe with all the Dr. Seuss news and all my videos out there that sometimes thinking about another vaccine, if something goes wrong, you can sue them. With this new vax, they say you can't sue them. Hmm. That should tell you. Well, yeah, it was made pretty quick. But like I said, it's a, it's a whole nother discussion. And each and every one of us are entitled to what you want to do with your body, Greg. So um, you just stay safe, brother, because I hope that one day we get a chance to, to get a drink together. Um, but anyway, moving right along. So that's it. Dr. Seuss didn't really bring in the views. I didn't go viral. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's something that you just have to keep working for. And I'm okay with that. You know, my dad, I don't know if you're there, dad. Dad, he's there, but um, I come from like, you know, the 70s, 80s. And uh, we had to work for shit. We had, if we wanted something, we had to continue to work for it. It, it, it still it might take a long time. You know, this little thing right here. And, and, and people that have access to the phone, you can literally have access to anything that you want within seconds. So therefore, I feel like the younger generations, uh, Dan, <laughs> Dancing Man Dan, <laughs> um, the younger generations are so quick to have, um, you know, feel like they deserve everything and they, they should uh, be able to get everything they want immediately. And I think that's where that stigma of being entitled comes from. I've been peer pressure to take the vaccine from. Yeah, that's another thing. It, it sucks when your relatives are like, you know, you have to take it and they're acting all high and mighty and stuff like that. Calvin, do what you want, man. It's on you. It's on you because, um, you know, it, it, it is a, it is a peer pressure. You know, I, I know that feeling and it's not good. It's not good to tell anybody how they should handle their health and um you know that's that's their opinion i hope that you can work it out with your family but back to what i was saying with this is you know this type of thing with the channel and stuff like that is just gonna take longer you're just gonna keep putting out dr seuss videos and maybe we didn't hit it this time but maybe we'll hit it in the next one yep they want everything right away and if they can't have it they say they're entitled to it exactly it's kind of bizarre right it's it's, it's a weird thing like anyway I don't want to get too much onto that. This is what we're drinking. It is a dark black beer. I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right. It's called Chorn, I think. It's Ukrainian. Like I think it might even be a malt liquor. Uh, or malt, sorry, malt lager. But let's go ahead and for another swig. All right, we got 10 people in the room. Be sure to go ahead and hit that like button. I really like the sweetness of this beer. It's got that caramel kind of flavor, uh, almost like a molasses or a car, uh, like a caramel. I love Dr. Seuss. Thank you, Calvin. Me too. Everybody loves Dr. Seuss. This made-up notion that he was a racist, I, I don't know if I actually believe it. Um, I think what he was doing is depicting the times, right? Whether they're right or wrong, whether you like it or not, that's just what he was doing. Uh, would you recommend this beer to your pals if you were at the bar? Good question. Good question. You know what? I don't know. I don't know yet, Frank. I, I'm thinking about it because it's it's almost like it's like like a dessert beer, or a beer that you want to drink when you're eating a nice steak. It is hearty. It's um it's fulfilling. Okay, it's definitely strong. It's seven percent. I'm already feeling it. Um, so I don't know if I would definitely recommend this one if i was sitting at a dinner table and i said you want i want a nice hearty beer 
this is probably a good one to go to. But if like we were going to a bar and we we're going to be standing and drinking a lot and uh, going out, I don't know because there's something heavy about this beer. Is uh, that you know you don't want to drink a lot of too heavy stomach beers. But anyway, we're moving on, guys. Um, I don't know if you guys are noticed, but the vaccine is coming. But also AMC, the movie theater. They are officially opened in New York City and all throughout New York State. I think they'll be opening up hopefully two more weeks into California. California, they'll be opening up. I saw that uh, Los Angeles Dodgers will be having uh, fans in the stadium. So looking forward to that. Looking forward to possibly going to a movie theater. I'm not really sure how I feel about it. I never liked movie theaters when they were packed. I always liked going on a Tuesday or Wednesday afternoon at like 1 o'clock when nobody's around. But... If movies are your thing, or if you have AMC stock, look for a pop. Okay, not liking the dark beer. <laughs> it's not racist. That's funny. They never have fans in the stadium. Oh, well, I got I to gotta disagree. I, you know, um, Dodgers are actually pretty good, man. They've been, they've been really good for the last four years. And they got a big stadium. The problem with the Dodgers are is in Los Angeles. So people don't start showing up until the third inning. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, like, it's literally like, you if you get there early at the Dodgers game, you can, I'm Russian, if my Russian is correct, dark beer, so maybe the same. Yes. Nice, Calvin. I like it. So, this probably means dark beer. I like that. Thank you for the little bit of knowledge. I appreciate that, Calvin. All right, so, moving on. I don't know if you guys saw last night's UFC, Talking Quick Sports. Pretty good, pretty good card. Really a stacked card. Amanda Nunes is the pound for pound best woman fighter ever. You know, there's no contest. She annihilated Megan Anderson. She's just mopping up ladies all over. Don't mess with her. I think she could beat a lot of the guys out of that weight class. She's just fierce. Um, there was some controversy. Aljamain Sterling was fighting Piotr Jan, and he had both knees on the ground, and uh, P uh, which is Ill illegal to, to knee or kick someone in the head when they're like that, because it's almost like they're getting up and they're helpless, and if they're helpless and they're shocked and they're stunned, there's no need to, to be able to kick them in the face, but Piotr, Piotr Jan kneed him in the face and knocked him unconscious, put him in a concussion, and this was huge implications because uh, they, the ref had told him he's down. Piotr Jan heard something in his corner, kneed him anyway as he was getting up, knocked him unconscious, and the ref called it uh, a, a no contest disqualification and awarded the belt then to Aljamain Sterling. Now, not the best way to win a championship belt. I'm sure Aljo wants to, to run it back and, and win it properly. But Piotr Jan did make an illegal move, a serious legal move, and he really knocked him out. If he, if he had a chance to see it, I mean, he was wobbly, concussed, like then tried to get up a few times, fell back down. I mean, when you get kneed to the face or the head from a pro fighter, I mean, the impact of this thing, you just, you know, on your head, it sucks that it happened. You never want to see a title fight end that way, and especially the transfer of the belt. But I'm sure the UFC will run it back as soon as possible. I'm probably thinking maybe early summer they'll fight again. And then you had um, Ad Israel Adesanya. Uh, yeah, it could be deadly. Exactly. I mean, it could be deadly. That's, that's you know, a couple of the things, too, is a lot of people don't know this if you watch UFC, but uh, a 12-6 to 6 elbow strike is also illegal. It's so 12 o'clock being this way. So coming down like this on somebody's head is illegal. You cannot come, you can come this way, you can come this way, you can come across, but you can't come this way. And the reason that rule came into effect was the commission. You remember back like, I mean, they might even still probably have it, but you'd be watching ESPN late night and they'd have like the brick breaking karate contests and people would like karate chop bricks. Well, a lot of times they would break them with their elbow and the way that they broke them was straight over the top 12 to 6. And they would break like ice and bricks and wood and shit like that. And the UFC and the Nevada State Commission and the all the commissions that fight deemed that disqualification if you did that because obviously your head is not as hard as bricks and ice and if somebody was to ever do that they could seriously crack open your head 
I mean, it is that if you've ever wondered why elbow strikes like that are illegal, that is why. Um, the only blemish John Jones has on his record is uh, a fight he fought Matt Hamill. Uh, the guy worked with here in Shanghai was MFA. He ended up with a broken vertebrae. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's crazy. Oh, what was the guy's name, uh, Frank? I knew a guy with a uh, with a broken vertebrae in Shanghai. But yeah, it's I mean it's terrible, right? It's it's um. You do not want to mess with that kind of stuff. So they have made that illegal. And then certainly you cannot kick or knee someone as they're trying to get up. Um, but anyway, if you have seen that, at Israel Adesanya, I'm trying to remember the guy. It's got to be the same. Yeah, I knew a guy. Was it Jonathan? I don't know if that was the same guy. But anyway, moving on. Um, yeah, that's probably Jonathan. Jonathan was a great dude, man. Yeah, he was. I, I, I'm almost positive it was Jonathan. Really good guy. But anyway, so Israel Anisanye tried to go up to light heavyweight to find Jan Blachowicz, the Polish power. Greg, Polish power, baby. And, um, well, he, uh, he, he wasn't able to do it. He wasn't able to win. If you had a chance to check that UFC out, it was a great card. Really enjoyed it. Great fights. Three title fights. Even the undercard was great. And, um, well... You know, I'm a big UFC fan, baseball, all that good stuff. So we got to get the sports over. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. Jan Bahovic is awesome, dude. You got to check this dude out. 38 years old, and he's bombing on folks. So this, this drink right here is for keeping the belt for Jan Bahovic, right? It, it, Jan seems like a guy that would be on the weekly beer and video review show. But anyway, cheers. Here we go. Tasty. Really tasty. It's got that mealy taste to it, right? Where you don't feel like you're drinking a beer. It's not it's not so refreshing like a beer should be. It's more of a mealy kind of flavorful beer. But really not bad. Really enjoying it. Like to sample all beers from around the world. The Black Beer Belt. <laughs> yes, I like that. And um, Ukraine is a spot that I definitely can't wait to get to. I love that region. Love the people. All my friends uh, that are Ukrainian. Um, are really great, and uh, I can't wait to get over there. So, moving on, uh, Nicholas Cage got married again. His fifth time. Okay, good for him. I'm glad he's happy. Now, the, the interesting thing about Nicholas Cage is his wife is 30 years younger than him. She's 26. She's from Japan. They met on FaceTime during the pandemic, and they got married, and he is 56. <laughs> Pretty interesting, right? I hope he's happy. How do you guys feel about marrying people that are a lot younger or older than you? Do you really care? Is it a big deal? What's the cutoff, right? I mean, for me personally, I don't give a shit. I mean, I'm happy for, for Nicolas Cage and his bride. Whatever you want to do, 30 years, 20 years, where it gets a little convoluted is the weird teenager thing. You shouldn't be doing stuff like that. That's a, that is a no-go zone, you know, but... um. He will be happy until he marries for the sixth time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, everybody's life is different. Who the hell are we to judge? You know, uh, wish them the best. Maybe they do find it. What if, what if this is the one, you know, and he lives to 86. That's 30 years. Cut off for me when they have been dead for the past two weeks. <laughs> I don't know what that even means, Greg. Good luck, Nick. Yeah, exactly. Good luck, right? I'm happy for you. Oh, you know, he had a successful career as an actor. You got some money. You had some brides. And, uh, you know, who are we to judge? Well, um, all right, moving on. I thought I would throw that in there. Um, uh, the stimulus package looks like it's going to pass here in the United States. Um, oh, I wanted to tell you guys about this. Let's go right into this. So there is a guy in the news, in the weird news. He lost his cat 15 years ago. He adopted this little baby kitten. From the shelter he let it go outside or whatever happened this was in los angeles and it got loose he went back to go get it you said cut off for getting married oh okay <laughs> yeah that would you know you definitely want to make sure they're living but anyway so the cat lee uh, disappears he's in la the cat disappears he just adopted it he just reunited with the cat after 15 years 15 years 
the cat in a city called Palmdale, which I believe is 30 miles uh, east of Los Angeles. It's in the desert. Isn't that crazy? The man was reunited. They showed pictures of him holding the cat and the, like he, he called the cat's name and it came over and like really just hopped up and it, it just, I can't believe that, right? Imagine losing your cat. And, and he was really sad when he first lost the cat because he went to the police station, he filed a police report, he drove around, he looked for it. He was sick and not knowing for 15 years what happened to the cat. And now he is reunited. I know, isn't that cool? That's pretty cool. I like that. That's some good news for you guys. And um, i got some bad news. Uh, Nate, I don't know if you're still here with me, but unfortunately, this is the second one in three weeks. But it's Zion National Park. We had another death from Angel's Landing. Um, it is no joke, guys. It is, um, it is a certain section that you can you can go hiking. If you haven't seen my video on Zion Park, Zion National Park is in Utah. Me and Nate and his wife Cindy went camping. Uh, we went glamping. But then we went into the park. I did a video on the park. We didn't do Angel's Landing, but I'm glad we didn't because I probably wouldn't be able to do it. Um, it's this really steep, crazy mountain where it gets incredibly narrow like incredibly like it is just if you haven't checked it out just google angels landing uh zion national park unfortunately people die there every year it's kind of like yosemite and um when you're hiking and you got to hike the cables you have to like scale this almost 95 percent grade wall just holding on to these two chains Okay, and just going up and, and, you know, Angel's Landing, there is no holding. I'm not sure what happened to this poor man. Uh, you know, it, it just sucks when people die like that because they didn't need to. Um, I know my limits when it comes to adventure. I'm not an extremist. I'm not a crazy, like, uh, adrenaline junkie. I know what I can do. I still go out in, in, in nature's elements, but I respect all that crazy stuff. And I don't try to be too brave, so... If you ever get a chance to go to Zion National Park, please be careful of Angel's Landing. You must be amazing, amazingly brave, and you have to have a lot of skill. I mean, people die there. This is the second one in three weeks. So uh, rest in peace to that poor young man. And, uh, you know, hopefully we won't have too much more of that. It, you never know what the conditions are up when you get that high with the rain, the wind, all kinds of elements with the ground. You know, you could be walking on this little narrow way and the sod slips or breaks and, you know, a piece of it falls, you slip. And once you get going, it's, it's a, yeah, no beers before Angel's Landing. Absolutely not. Yeah, so Sam, I just wouldn't do it. I, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, you know, it has to be a very secure thing for me to do. And I'm okay with that. You know, like, I don't need to be an extreme adventurist. You know, I, I'm good. I, you know, um, but yeah, thought I would bring that in. Now, it's time for show and tell. And now I got an awesome show and tell. Like I said before, if you're interested in show and tell, hit me up, DM me on Instagram or Facebook, and I'll set you up with the link. And we're going to be bringing people in on the 21st. Okay, that's when Nate will be here. That's when BC will be here. But guys, I want to introduce you guys to this real... Hey, Martin! Welcome! All right, good to see you, man. I want to introduce you to this really cool thing that my friend gave me. It is called the Zolero B12 Meridian Energy Pen. Check this thing out, okay? Now, I know what you're thinking, all right? This is a pen. You can draw with it. It's not that kind of pen, okay? What it is is, if you know anything about electric stimulation right <laughs> all right check this thing out it comes with all these little tools it's got a little rolly a little flat head and it looks like some kind of exotic pen right take a look right and it comes with a little bit of gel if you can see in there they got a gel we got a flat form uh, like a almost like a mushroom top okay for a larger surface um, we have oh we have like this little knife scalpel thing where it can get into grooves and things like that and what it is is it sends tiny electric volts i'm going to turn it on check it out it is on it's at zero right now now i'm going to turn it to i'm going to turn it to one okay now as you see you can see the the magical pen yeah you can see all the little points that you put into uh you put the pen on okay if you're having the liver meridian and the yin 
Okay, you put it on that spot, and I'm telling you, it's the weirdest thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on my neck, okay? Ooh, you can feel it. Okay, you can feel pulses radiating through the, the, the point where I'm touching, okay? If I put it on my arm down in here, okay? It's like a little shock, and it sends a little electric stimulation. Okay, now I'm exaggerating, but this is what it feels like. If you can see my arm twitching a little bit, not only is it twitching right on the spot, but it's twitching all the way down here and all the way up here. Now, I haven't got into it too much, and I've only kept it on one. So if I go to a higher setting, and I'm going to put it right on my knee, and you can see it if you've ever had electric stim. And electric stim helps... Um, well, if you've ever been injured and you have muscle aches or you have muscle injuries, they go ahead and they put these like um, like suction cups on you and they go ahead and they put it on your skin and it helps go, oh, I had that one, the setting too high. Okay, let's lower the setting on that one. That one gave me a quick jolt. Is there any scientific proof? I'm not really sure. To be honest with you, Calvin, I think that it, it, it's based off of old uh, Chinese acupuncture. Okay, but um, I don't know if there's any actual scientific proof. What I will tell you, how do I turn that? Okay, I turn it off. What I will tell you is that you absolutely feel something weird. Look, it's off, right? Now, if I put this thing on a pressure point like that, I'm being able to drive it into my neck or whatever, you don't feel nothing. If I put it on one, as I did right here, I put it here and it sent a shock of volt all the way through here. So it does something with like Chinese acupuncture, uh, the, the waves of your impulses in your nervous system. Okay, well, let me just go ahead and I'll read you real quickly uh, something about it. Um, five major health benefits of the Zorlo acupuncture pen. Pain relief. Relieves acute and chronic pain by blocking pain signals to your brain. The stimulation interrupts this pain while also relaxing muscles, increasing circulation, and encouraging cellular healing. Okay? Trigger points. The Zora acupuncture pen causes rapid muscle contraction. Yeah, I can, I can definitely agree. Similar to TENS unit, which is... Um, like electric stim if you've ever been hurt or whatever, to release trigger points and knotted muscle fibers, right? So it's just another way to go ahead and really attack a, 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 a part of your body that is, that is the energy patterns in your body, yes. Okay, let's, how do I put this down? Let's say if you have a pulled muscle or a knotted muscle, you can go in there and put this thing on there. It releases the trigger points, sends electric stimulation through it, and, well, it's supposed to work. I haven't had the luxury of having a nice muscle knot in a while, so I'm kind of waiting for it. I think I previewed my, my gun that I had that goes ahead and really works the knot of the muscle. This thing's a little bit different. This thing goes in a little bit deeper by sending electronic volts. But that is today's show and tell. I'm not sure how effective it is. I'm going to really wait till I get some type of muscle uh, pain or muscle injury or some type of muscle uh, cramp or some type of muscle knot, and I'm going to go ahead and use this. So I'll keep you guys posted, but I'm always interested in this stuff. It was a gift from my friend. He knows I like all this wacky um, stuff to kind of keep my body in shape and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was kidding. You got you to always go there. when You, you got to play the joke, right? So I'm not really sure to answer your question calvin but i'll keep you posted guys if you're just hopping on we are drinking this beer it is from ukraine it is a black beer it's got a sweet malty flavor to it it's a delicious lager that i definitely am enjoying and we're going to go ahead i'm going to sip a little bit of it we're going to do what would you rather i'm going to score it and we're going to go on today's second beer <laughs> i like that frank the weekly gun show baby that's funny. That's funny. And you know what's funny is I'm very reserved. Like, um, I, I, I barely ever take my shirt off or show my physique. And uh, it's very funny that you said that because I just do it for the joke. <laughs> my, my brother was telling me over Christmas, he's like, dude, I don't think I've seen you with your shirt off in 25 years. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a lot of it is, you know, he, 
he doesn't live here in California. I don't live in New York, so we don't go in the summertime. But uh, I just, um, you know, it, it's just so funny. I, it, it's more of a play on a D bag, you know. All right, here we go. Drum roll. And we are all doing what would you rather? I'm going to give you five questions. None of them are right. None of them are wrong. It's just how you interpret it. You can go ahead and tell me now, or you can drop in the comments below after the show. By the way, I just want to say thank you so much to Jens and Barrow for always going ahead and letting me uh, listen to what you got to say after the show and appreciate you guys always dropping that comment in there. So thanks to Jens and Barrow. But yeah, let me go ahead and give you the what would you rather of today. Here we go. All right, where would you rather go? Would you rather go to Ecuador, okay, Ecuador, South America, and go on like a little trek through the jungle, or would you rather go to the Philippines? The Philippines are beautiful. I've been to the Philippines, all these little islands, there's mountains, the people are wonderful, man. The food is delicious, it's a wacky, it's a fun place, it's super cheap. I've never been to Ecuador. I hope that I can get there one day. My friend brought it to my attention. He was telling me how awesome it was. And um, that's probably why it popped up on today's show. I, I, I never hit both. I, I agree with you, Calvin. But um, if you could only do one, I've been to the Philippines. I hope to go back. I really love the Filipino people. I love their spirit. I love who they are. And I'm going to bring some Filipinos on here. Nice, Martin, onto the show. But for me, I really want to see Ecuador. I definitely want to see what it's all about. It's a very small country in South America, but it's got a lot to offer. I'm sure the people are great. I'm sure the food is delicious and the natural beauty in Ecuador, because it's not a super overpopulated country, must be astonishing. And I hope and I cannot wait to get to it. Question number two. What would you rather, guys? All right, so this is a food question. Which one rather eat? Which one would you rather eat? Okay. The Australian, okay, it's from Australian. It is the steak and kidney pie. Look at this thing, okay? It's not like a sweet pie. It's got chunks of steak, okay? And then a little bit of, um, I'm sorry, it's not even really steak. Back in the early days, it was pigeon, okay? But now it's uh, steak and uh, they call it steak, but it's uh, more of chicken meats and things like that. But look at it, steak and kidney pie. You got the kidneys in there. Um, it's got this flaky crust uh, that's like a pie crust. You cut this thing open. The seasoning must be great. Oh man, this looks good. It looks like like hearty, uh, home cooked. You come in on a Sunday. It may be cold in the winter time, and you eat a steak and kidney pie. I've never actually eaten one of these things, but I'm definitely curious about it. Oh, I'm sorry. I got my I got a, I got my terminology messed up. That is actually steak and kidney pie. There was no pigeon or chicken. This one is the pigeon and chicken. So sorry about that, guys. And this is called pastella, okay? Pastella, am I saying that right? And it is like a Moroccan. Good call to the pigeon steak. Nice moon. No pigeon. This one has pigeon. Pigeon and chicken, and it's got walnuts and apricots, and like it's a little more flaky and thin. Check it out. And it is Moroccan or Turkish, and it's got that weird savory flavor of sweet and uh, and and uh, salty going on in it. And both are pretty much the same style when it comes to like a cake or a pie. They're filled with meats. They're seasoned well. But which would you rather, the steak and kidney? Okay, look how juicy that looks. Or this pastella, this fruit and savory Moroccan dish. Oh, I'm for the Moroccan pigeon dish. Nice, okay. All right. Um, now, I'm curious. Does that mean because you are... Because a lot of people, when they hear kidneys, they're like thrown off just psychologically, right? But when I'm bringing pigeons into the play, you'd think that would throw people off. But pigeons are actually quite popular outside of... Nice, Trinitech. Outside the United States, a lot of countries 
eat them. I, it's a toss-up, man. This one's really hard, and I love, love North African dishes. But for me, I always wanted to try this. I've always heard about it from either British, Australian, New Zealand, um, Welsh people. I want the steak and kidney pie. I want the best one you got. I definitely want to try it. So for me, it's the steak and kidney pie. How about you? What, what would you rather, the pastella or the steak and kidney pie? Pigeon is very mobile chicken. I'm on it. Yeah, exactly. It's, you know... I mean, I don't know if I'd go and eat the pigeons on in, in you know the United States. It's like a rat with wings, but you know pigeons are much different around the world, and they do have a lot of meat. All right, going on number three. All right, which one do you prefer? Which one do you like? Look forward to watching, the Oscars or the Grammys? Are you into movies? I put to die and go where we not know. Or are you into music? <laughs> I don't know. I'm feeling buzzed. Guys, which one do you prefer? Do you prefer watching the Grammys or the Oscars? It's a toss-up. You know, um, I feel like the Grammys and the Oscars are getting way, way too political. And, um, you know, people are really using their platform as an artist to go ahead and tell other people how they should live. When the people that are watching are living that way anyway... All right, it's a very, very small few people, and they don't listen to anybody anyway. That's why they go ahead and they live the way they live, and then that's why we have a problems. So instead of it being on top of the artistic, thank you very much, sometimes it gets skewed for both of them. So I'm a little bit indifferent, but as an actor myself, hopefully one day I'm standing there <laughs> on, on stage accepting an award. I, it would, it, you know, I got 30 more years probably. Okay, but don't take that lightly. I'm working my ass off every day. It's not like, oh, I can do it later. No, 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 no. I've got 30 years to perfect my craft. So maybe I'll see that stage one day. But for me, it's always going to be the Oscars. Love music. But the Oscars for me really signify not only the actors and the directors of great movies. Okay, whichever had rock. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but all the people that are um, the unsung heroes of movies, like the composers and the foldy artists and the, and the um, costume people and things like that. So that's always cool to see. Anyway, moving right along to number four. <sighs> okay, which would you rather live without for 90 days? Three months, okay? Three months, you can't live without a car. Okay, can't wait for you to accept the... <laughs> Thank you, Calvin. You never know, right? You just never know. If um, if I continue to work hard and get better, and the right role is there for me, and I get it, and I work extremely hard on that role, you don't know what could happen 5, 10, 15 years from now. J.K. Simmons didn't win his Oscar until he was 62 years old. So I'm good, man. Got 20-some years more. All right. But, um, Ron, what would you rather for right now? Which would you rather, okay? Would you rather live... 90 days without a car, okay? Now, some of you live in pedestrian cities. New York City, Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou. Uh, I'm not sure some of the other countries out there. I know Copenhagen is quite pedestrian. You can actually ride your bike everywhere. Um, and, you know, some places have no transportation other than your feet or bicycle. So, I'm talking more probably from the United States perspective, especially from Los Angeles. Would you rather live 90 days with no car or 90 days with no phone? <laughs> oh, no phone. The dork machine. Take it out of my hands. <laughs> what would you rather, guys? Would you rather 90 days with no phone or 90 days you got to hoof it everywhere? I don't have a car. That's awesome. Yeah, it's tough for me. I mean, I do a lot of shit uh, on my phone because of business and stuff. But And I like the technology that the phone... Car for Jen's nice. I like the technology that the phone brings us. I like how it uh, brings us all around the world like like this. Um, no need need the machine. <laughs> all right. 
So I'm in agreement with most of the people here. I'm going to ditch the car. I would prefer not to have a car. Now, I love my truck, but I prefer not to have it. If I could trade it for a pedestrian city where I only rode bicycle, subway, uh, I had to take a taxi every now and then, much like I did in China, I would do it in a second, in a heartbeat. I don't need the stress of a car. I don't want to be on the road. And you can really feel the angst and the anger amongst people here in Los Angeles because of the car. No car. I used to take the bus all day to work. Yeah, that's cool. Now, you'd say to yourself, wouldn't you think a metropolitan place like LA would have an amazing subway system and car and bus system? It's not, okay? The subway system is small because of earthquakes and they haven't developed it. Uh, it's spread out here. And then the bus system is so damn dangerous. Uh, there's just, just so many uh, homeless, crazy, crackhead, gang kids, um, it, it's just not a, it's not a safe place for the ordinary people, right? Um, so you can't use public transportation in LA like you'd think to. I mean, every time you stop at a subway, there's somebody kicking off at the su or the, the, the bus stop. Then you get on the bus and you're in this little tube with wheels and they're kicking off inside. It's a disaster. Every time I ride the subway or the bus in Los Angeles, Something happens. It's just a shit show. And, um, you know, it's sad. It's really, I rode that excellent gold train in L.A., but I realized, yeah, exactly. It doesn't go everywhere, right? It goes like, all right, I think the gold one goes from, like, downtown to Pasadena. What's that? Like, five, six stops? Anyway, <clears throat> for me, ditch the car. All right, going with the last number five. The last number five is not gross. It's more of a scary one. Which would you rather do? Now, I'm going to be sensitive to this one because I know people have lost their lives to both of these things. So let's not look at it as a, a grim, a dark thing. Let's not look at, you know, we're not pointing out uh, the people that have done this. And if you have or you know somebody has, I'm very sorry about that. Um, I, it's just a fear that you have. And I think everybody has it. Some part of them have it. So let's go ahead and do the last one on this one. But let's... Put a little asterisk, if you will, as saying that, hey, look, nobody really gets hurt in this one. Nobody loses their life, okay? We'll say that. You might get hurt a little bit, but you don't lose your life, okay? You don't lose any extremities, and you know, you're not going to lose an arm or a leg or anything. But uh, the fear of itself should sit in, and it should grasp you. Either one, I know that you guys, no matter who you are, you have something going on. By the way, we got 11 people in the room. Be sure to go ahead and hit that like button, because I only see four likes. So let's go smash, smash, smash that like, and um, you know, bump it up a little bit. But here is now, now I'm curious, wait it out. All right, which would you rather do, okay? You got to go 100 yards, okay? This is the try in the middle up here. <laughs> No middle of air. I see two more likes. Thanks, guys. All right. So you got to go 100 yards. 100 yards is a football field. As wide as a football field. Okay. Would you rather go 100 yards knowing that there are three sharks in that water? From one side to the other. You got to swim. Swim it up. Okay. Backstroke it up. Okay. Breaststroke it up. Okay. Butterfly it up. Okay, however you got to get from one side to the other, you got to swim, and there are three sharks. Not great whites that are going to take off your torso. We're talking about like black tip reef, maybe some sand sharks, but they're in there, and they're hungry, and they're going to bite you, and you're going to get bit by them. Sharks, okay? I can't swim either way. All right, well, Greg, yeah, and I, you know, I've got her. We're not, we're not saying goodbye, okay? Or 100 yards of grass, high grass, like African high grass. It's like up to your waist at least. And you gotta walk through this thing with bare feet, okay, 100 yards. But in this field, there are 50 snakes. <laughs> no, yeah, we can put some chum in there. There's 50 snakes in that grass. So every time you wrestle, and all of a sudden, you might get pam, 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 you might get hit by all these different snakes. Who knows what could happen? 
What are you doing? Oh, by the way, you're in your underwear too. You're in a bathing suit. Okay, we're gonna go both of these, and you're in a speedo. So maybe, maybe you're swimming. Okay, <laughs> you know what this is, and then the shark will grab you, or maybe you're running, right? Maybe you're running, <laughs> and it's snake. <laughs> All right, okay, sorry. <laughs> no, okay, so is it sharks or snakes? That's a tough one. Oh my gosh. Something about being bit by a shark while you're floating in water. Um, even though I go completely into the water all the time, go on the waves, have a good time out here, still petrified of it. But being through, um, being bit by snakes before, I used to own snakes and I've been bit by them many times. Um, I definitely don't like the feeling of when you're bit by a snake. And um, so for me, I'm going to have to choose. I don't even know who <laughs> underwear. Well, Greg, you, uh, you're going to be hurting. I'm going to have to choose uh, the snakes, okay? So bite me up, snakes, okay? Uh, but I'm running, dude. I'm running as fast as I can across that grassy knoll, and those snakes are going to bite me. Um, I'm going to get through it. There is a chance that you can get nothing, but the fact that you might get bit by a shark while you're swimming is petrifying. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. What would you rather? Please let me know after the show. Your what would you rather? <laughs> we are drinking uh, Chorn, if I'm uh, familiar. I'm going to go ahead and swig it down. We're going to give it a score, and then we're moving on with the second beer. Ah, nice shark bite you got. That's a nice shark bite. Yeah. How you doing, honey? Check out my shark bite. <laughs> oh, I love Jaws. Delicious. Really, really delicious beer. Going back to Frank's comments, I would, Frank. I would still recommend it. I've already advanced to my second beer. Yes! Okay, Frank. Second beer is going to be awesome. I'm so excited to drink it. I would say that I would recommend it to a friend to answer your question earlier, but I would say that it's probably more of a dinner beer. But let's go into it. Let me dive into the score. Let's see. The taste. I felt like it was a nice, sweet malt flavor. I felt like it wasn't overpowering in any flavor. It had absolutely no hop taste to it, which was kind of a bummer, right? I like beers that taste like hoppy, like an IPA. But it was a lager, so the malt flavor and the cereal grain is definitely going to be more prominent. I felt like, yeah, Jayo. And then I felt like, well, it just had a really smooth, clean sweetness to it that I really enjoyed. Overall, delicious. Would definitely pair it with a nice meal. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give it a 3.5 on the taste. Okay. Hey, Lisa. Welcome to the show, Lisa, my dear sister, who is always supportive of my show. Whether she hops on for 15, 20 minutes at the end or she just pops on for an hour. Lee, thank you so much. I love it when you're here. Um, I really appreciate it. I'd love to get you on show and tell. Uh, maybe Damon can set you up and we'll get you on there. Go for half an hour. Hope you'll still be on. Got to go for half an hour. Hope. Well, Calvin, we're probably looking at a half an hour more. But, but, dude, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much. All right, here we go. The price. Now, this is a weird one, right? The price for this one, you'd think that this thing, sorry, so late vehicle, no problem. Hey, Burger Boy's still here. Yes. All right, my main man. All right, so check it out. The price of this beer, it's not too bad, right? The bottle costs $3.99, but it is a bigger bottle. It's a 7 percenter, so it definitely gets you a little Popeye. And really, you know, when you're buying something from a different country or you're buying something exotic, you feel like, well, that's okay. It's under five bucks. What the hell? So really not a bad price point. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give it also a 3.5. Now, if you're wondering, well, what gets a better price point? Well, if it's tr if it's cheap, right? If this thing was at two bucks a bottle with the 3.5 taste, probably get a 5.0, right? But really good price point for what you're getting. I'm enjoying the beer. It's probably cheaper somewhere in Ukraine, but here in the United States, that's what it is. Lots of import taxes. Yeah, that's what Greg, Greg, exactly. Lots of import taxes, things like that. But still, a fair price at $3.99. All right, design. Design, design, design. Guys, look at this thing. It just, to me, I don't know about you guys, it just says Russian. 
okay look at this thing it's just it's just a bigger bottle it's got a couple like the 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 neck is fatter right yeah my name is bora you know it's just it just looks like friggin russian i love the gold and black the font on this thing is beautiful i love that it's got some ukrainian words in there that i have absolutely <laughs> exactly nate you'd pay eight bucks in a bar for a bottle like this it's got some ukrainian shit going on it tells you how much percent alcohol is um i just i just like how this is like um shoot I, pretty soon we're gonna have the new bar and, and when we move into the new studio i got postponed and it won't be until july so stay tuned for it but it's going to be decked out with all kinds of fun stuff but but this is like the big brother right of the box right this thing is awesome always appreciate the second half thank you frank freaking i'm a frank i'm buying you a beer and giving you a freaking hug as soon as i see you but really beautiful bottle i'm gonna go ahead we all loosen up a bit i love it yeah exactly all right i'm gonna go ahead and give it a 4.0 i just think it's a cool bottle i think that like i just feel i feel you know don't go after me in the comments okay i know you know don't be too sensitive i just feel really manly when i'm drinking this bottle of beer <laughs> anyway all right accessibility now for the most part this beer is hard to find here in the united states um over in Europe, I don't know where you're going to find it. Eastern Europe, probably pretty accessible. I'm loosey-goosey before the show even starts. <laughs> nice, Greg. So accessibility is hard, right? This beer is going to be a hard beer to find. You're going to find it at specialty stores. But where you might also find it is Russian restaurants. You might find it... Um, where they have like Budweiser, Heineken, and Chorn if you go and have some pierogies. You might find it in any city in the world. So I think the accessibility on this one, because it is a popular beer of Ukraine, which is the national beer. All right. Well, I'm not sure if it's a national beer, but I believe it is popular after doing some research on it. I think you could find it somewhere. As far as accessibility for the world, you're not going to find it in a lot of places. Las Vegas, you might be able to find it at least. Here in L.A., you can find it at Total Beer and Wine. But other than that, I don't know where you're going to find it in the U.S. Africa, probably non-existent. Eastern Europe, pretty good chance. Asia, eh, they get a lot of weird stuff. If you drink some Belgian beer, you might be able to... Yes, I, we're going to be doing that soon. We are doing Belgian beer. You know what? We're going to do it next week. We're going to get schlitzed on it. All right, pierogies preferred over the pit. Yeah. Pierogies are delicious. All right, I'm purposely not bringing one of the foods out that I really want to bring from Pennsylvania because I'm waiting for Nate to bring it on his segment of the show. Uh, would you eat it or not? Um, so you guys are in for a treat with that one, but uh, I know he's a big pierogi eater. Anyway, going back to accessibility, not the greatest, not the easiest. I don't feel like you'll be able to find it. So I'm going to give it the standard 2.5, okay? Usually that holds the par for accessibility. Now the TMD X Factor. Real simple. Want to go to Lev, Ukraine? Have some great Ukrainian friends. Great bottle. The women are beautiful in Ukraine. I don't know why. I just feel like drinking this beer on a Ukrainian cafe would make my friggin' year. I just really love this bottle. I love this beer. I love that it's 7%. And I cannot wait to start traveling again and visiting Ukraine. I'm going to do like a Latvia, uh, uh, Estonia. No, I'm just sorry. Let's do Poland and visit Greg Z. Uh, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Ukraine. Okay. Then I'm going to shoot on a boat over. And I'm going to see Jens over in Norway. I'm going to go swoop down to uh uh, Sweden and see my good buddy Joel and then I'm gonna fly on over to Finland that's the trip man that is gonna be the travel man Dan northern Europe eastern Europe Scandinavian whatever the hell you want to call it and I just feel like this beer I'm gonna be thinking about so the TMD X factor the fact that I really enjoy it and like it and picked it out I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a 4.0 so not a bad score for that one Let's go ahead, tally these things up, and bust out the second beer because I'm pumped. And we might go longer than we've ever gone today. All right, let's see. I got to do this in my head, so bear with me. Tough, tough call. 
Okay, so here we go, guys. Just under. What about Denmark, Dan? Oh, you know I'm going to Denmark. You know, yes. Um, great shot. I love it, Frank. Yeah, first of all, Frank, I love that you're on your third tornado. Those are delicious beers. And you know I'm going to Denmark. Like, literally, I'm trying my best in the next four to five years to make Denmark my home base. <laughs> like, I'm not even playing around. Like, I love Denmark. And uh, I hope that I can maybe one day move there and uh, at least spend a year or two of my life and film that section of the world based out of Denmark. You know, I feel like if I was to live in, in, in Europe, it would be Italy, Hungary, or Denmark. But it's a strong Denmark. So you know I'm coming, Trunatic. You know I'm coming there. And um, all right. So the total for that one was a 17.5. 17.5. Not a bad score at all. Really good. I feel like uh, the I forget what the par was. The par on par was a 17, so just over it, or maybe it was an 18. I forget, guys. I was probably intoxicated, overly drunk, and I forget. But we're gonna state it right now. To be on par is a 17. That means it's a solid beer. Much like a percentage of alcohol has to be above six percent. In order to be considered really good, you got to be over 17%. So, 17.5, the chone is in. Now, let's get in to the second beer. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let me introduce you to the second beer and I'll tell you a little story about it. I was uh, working, I worked a construction job and I was working in a new town. It's a country town called Bakersfield, California. And I used to stay overnight in a hotel. So, I went to the uh, gas station across the street from where our hotel was, getting some water. When I stopped and saw what a craft beer selection they had in this tiny little gas station called Sully's. S-U-L-L-E-Y-S. Great place in Bakersfield. I couldn't believe it. Because they had these amazing, amazing artistic IPA cans. And there was like, man, there was like eight of them. Right, so I, I picked up a bunch of them. We're going to review them a lot. But the cool thing is, not only did I pick them up off of Instinct, they had great names, great art and stuff like that, but the brewery is right here in Los Angeles and Glendale. And I'm going to be for sure, I'm going to take Lala there and we're going to have a couple of drinks. Lala is my friend from the museum. Uh, she's a beautiful Armenian lady. And I uh, definitely want to go and take her out for a couple of these when we can get back up and running. And guys, I'm talking about Paperback Brewing Company. This beer is called Raised by Wolves West Coast IPA. Check that shit out, man. Look at this thing. Now, if that doesn't scream, Travel Man Dan likes the friggin' label. Um, you know, I love the play Raised by Wolves. You know, and they're all basically wearing TVs. And, um, you know, isn't that what we're raised about? <laughs> Good morning, crowd! Yes! Welcome, my friend from Dubai. Welcome to the show. But, um, yeah, this is it. Okay, it is a West Coast-style IPA. I haven't figured out what that is. I think that's more of a fruity, juicy, uh, delicious kind of flavor. If that makes sense. I don't know. Delicious is usually depending on the person. But 6.6%, um, so it registers as a strong beer. Paperback Brewing Company is in Glendale, California on Magnolia Avenue, really close to a comedy club I used to play at. Um, I cannot wait to check out this bitch in Independent Craft Brewery. Nate, I'm going to take you there too, man. So let's go ahead and crack this sucker open, and then I'll give it a good healthy pour. All right, now one thing I really want to do, I got to get another Tenacious Freak Aquanuts. I know you guys, if you're still there, I keep saying we're bringing out the big mammer jammer. And you know what? I'm so sorry. I keep forgetting. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to be doing the Just One Beer Show on March 17th, which is St. Patrick's Day. So on that day, I'm going to be doing a delicious combo that my friend suggested. And I'm going to drink it from the big mamma jammer from Denmark. So... 
be sure to check that one out. We'll be going at 6.30 California PST, Pacific Standard Time. Time And uh, that's all I <laughs> Yes, I know. That is all you, all you Irish. Frank, are you uh, Irish? Are you American Irish? That's awesome. Um, so we'll be definitely... Um, we'll be definitely drinking that. Nate uh, will be live. Okay, it'll be the first show that Nate will be on. He won't be doing his segment. He'll be drinking the same beer as me. So look forward to that. And let's go ahead. <coughs> I believe so. Nice. And let's go ahead and crack this sucker open. Here we go. Raised by wolves. All right. Eee, Aquanuts. Welcome to the show. Oh, man. Dude, this one. This one is skunky. This literally smells like a bag of weed that my friend has. That is a weedy, hoppy flavored smell. And um, wow, let's go ahead and pour this sucker open. I see a bunch of people here. Guys, is my dad here? He's been kind of quiet. Dad, are you here today? Uncle John, we have you guys here in the show? All right, look at this. This is what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm definitely an East Coaster, okay? That's my friend. I am definitely an East Coast, born and raised in Buffalo, New York. But wow, oh wow, I love me. Whatever a West Coast IPA style is, you can really smell this sucker. Okay, it smells like a, a skunk blunt. Okay, if you know what that is, it's a blunt filled with skunk weed. It's really fragrant and hops. And oh my gosh, I can't smell any citric flavor, but I'm going to... Hey, Dad's here. Yes. Hi, right, Pops. Cheers to dad, all right? He is a staple, all right? He's like a like a rock. He's always here. Thank you, dad. All right, here we go. Oh, man. Oh, this is the one. This is what I like. So, as I find out more about brewing and what brewing is, and, you know, I don't want to ever be that snobby beer guy i want to shoot you guys straight and i think or hope that that hey baba's here yes all right so i hope that you guys like the style that i bring that it's just a normal guy from drinking stuff i'm not a, a connoisseur of beer or whatever they call those people that are experts in beer but i'm becoming more and more knowledgeable about beer so that i'm able to discuss with you guys the qualities that each type of beer has, the brewing process, what goes on in the fermentation, or maybe uh, what makes the flavor the flavor. So as I continue to learn and I continue to grow this channel, I'm also creating a higher production level by making myself more knowledgeable to share and make these videos valuable to you. Because, well... I'm never going to be like stroking my beard and going, eh, you know, a West Post IPA is a bit of a do doo ba ba doo ba doo ba doo ba I'm just going to tell you, hey, look, this fucking beer is, tastes like this and it's awesome and you should drink it. And I hope that's what you like about it. But the knowledge behind it is secure and definitely worth knowing. So if I can somehow bring that to you guys, I hope that you enjoy that. I hope that you enjoy that style. And, uh... Wow, this West Coast IPA, really amazing. I love, love this stuff, man. And the fact that it's only 15 minutes from my home. Yes. All right. I feel like calling up Lala right now because she lives in Glendale. and be like, yo, let's go drink some beer. Burger Boy, we're going here. Anyway, moving right along. Speaking of Bakersfield, guys, I did another video in Bakersfield probably about three months ago and I'm going to go ahead and release it. So uh, there is this place. Nate knows about it. Um, I never knew about it until I went to Bakersfield. But it is a fast food restaurant and they only serve chicken fingers. It is called Raising Cane's. Let me know if you guys have ever tried Raising Cane's before. It is awesome. It's one of the fastest growing fast food franchises here in the United States. It's fantastic. All they do is uh, uh, chicken fingers, coleslaw, french fries with a big chunk of Texas toast. But they got this amazing dip. I don't know what the hell this thing is. It's like spicy, creamy, mayo. It's awesome. And the, the way that their chicken fingers are, they're really never heard of it. I think it sounds like good. Frank, 
you wouldn't believe how tasty it is. You can only get like chicken fingers, uh, three, five, yeah, food, fr yeah, it's going to be a food Friday, gents. It's going to be a food Friday. It is, um, it is awesome, man. Every time I go to Bakersfield, now I go ahead and I make sure I go to Raisin Cane's. Uh, really friendly staff. It's a new and up and coming fast food restaurant that is local to, well, Bakersfield. I don't know if we have them in Los Angeles or maybe I don't know where they are. But when I was telling Nate about it, I have you, you love Dip Dan. <laughs> when I was telling Nate about it, he told me his wife, Cindy, loves it. Okay, loves it. I like Korean chicken. Yeah, it's kind of like Korean chicken. It's really, really good. Um, you got to check this video out. It comes out next Friday, so stay tuned for Food Friday. We're still on the schedule of Reading Man Dan, Food Friday, Travel Man Dan. Reading Man Dan, Food Friday, Travel Man Dan. So stay tuned to it. Um, I'll be doing those hiking videos that I'm, I'm really pumped up about. So for March... April and May, I'm going to be putting out a five series of where to go hiking in Los Angeles. Then, you know, like I said, that rotation of Reading Man Dam, uh, uh, Food Friday, and then the Travel Man Dam will be hiking. And then I think probably somewhere towards the mid part of the summer, I'll be hopping on a plane. We're going to do Hawaii. We're going to do Arizona. We might possibly get down to Mexico. So, We've got a fun stacked year, but check out this Food Friday from Raising Canes. It's going to be awesome. Guys, I'm so excited about this West Coast IPA. Dad, this one tastes like that really hoppy from Shanghai Brewery. Frank, I don't know if you've ever been to Shanghai Brewery, but they have this really tasty, sweet, hoppy IPA. And I think that's what it, flavor the West Coast IPA kind of goes after. Let's go ahead and for another sip. Really smooth, really clean. It's like the traditional uh, IPA flavor. I lived there. Yeah, you've had that one then, right? Shanghai Brewer. But it sucked when they closed down, when the government took over that building. What are you? <laughs> yeah, I know. My, me and my father loved that place. We absolutely loved it there, Frank. Um, but the one thing about this particular IPA that I really like is it's not... A full hazy IPA, and it's not a full like a uh, just uh, traditional IPA. Yeah, I told, I know. It sucked when they took that one out. On what was it, Dong Pu? Oh, and um, but anyway, we'll get into it in a minute. It's just the right amount of IPA. It's super hoppy. Okay, it's got a nice, very very light flavor of lemon going on in there. Um, uh, oh, that sucks. I used to like Yong Kong Lu. Um, but yeah, really delicious beer. Love love the paperback stuff. And I got three other beers. They got a shitload of beer. So after this video is done, be sure to check out the description. I'll, I'll put a link to their um, brewery. You can check out all the different beers. All these awesome labels. I got four of them in the fridge outside. I'm really pumped up about bringing you guys these ones. One of the rock deaf looking right into the American. <clears throat> yeah. I know. Anyway, moving on, guys. It's Barrow's favorite. It may be your favorite. It is time for this day in history. Now, I will be handing over this day in history to our favorite person ever on the show, BC. So, BC will be doing this day in history. He is a history buff. He's always loved it. I think he has a history degree. Um, but uh, he's have a great Sunday, everyone. Livia Kalani is back. Lisa. Goodbye. Thank you. Appreciate it. So we're looking forward to BC taking it over. We got next week. I'm going to be doing it. Uh, and then BC will be on after that. Uh, I'm not a history teacher. I don't like history. But I'm going to bring you guys what happened on this particular day. So, excuse me. Even the burps taste good with this paperback. All right, here we go. On March 7th, 321. Long time ago, Pharaoh. <laughs> long time ago, in 321, Roman Emperor Constantine the First decrees that the Dies Solis and Victica Sunday is the day of the rest of the empire. Wow. Okay. So the Roman Emperor Constantine the First basically said, "You know what? We're gonna make this day 
this particular day. We're going to call it uh, Sunday. Well, it was at, it's called uh, Dia Son Invictica. Okay, my, my Italian sucks, but it's basically translated into Sunday. We're going to make this the day of rest. Now, I understand other cultures, other religions like that, they have different uh, Sabbaths, right? My good friend Tomer, his Sabbath is on Saturday. So the Jewish Israeli people, they don't work on Sunday. Now, Sunday here in the United States follows that Catholic Christianity. And so, a little late, no problem, Wonder Strudel, you are here. But on this day in history, 321, the Roman Emperor Constantine I declared that this would be the day of rest. So, I hope that you're resting. Maybe you're doing some laundry or you're having some beers. But I declare this as weekly beer and video review show. <laughs> All right, here we go. On this day in history, on March 7th, 1778, Captain James Cook first sights the Oregon coast at Yaquanam Bay. Okay, why is this important? Because James Cook discovered everything. And he discovered the west coast of uh, this bay. And he falls into it. He's here in this beautiful place in Oregon. The guy is awesome. If you don't know who James Cook is, he's one of the most uh, popular, if not the most popular explorer. But when you look at the volume of stuff that he discovered. So check it out. But on this day in history, in 1778, he first sights the Oregon coast. On this day in history, on March 7th, 1854, Charles Miller patents the first U.S. sewing machine to stitch buttons. What? Okay, now, you might not think this is a big deal, but sewing machine now has mass production ability to stitch buttons onto coats, onto shirts, Right? You don't think anything of it, right? But back in the day, they probably had to hand sew each button, maybe make a little snip on the other side if they even had it. But this guy, Charles Miller, in 1854, patented this machine that would go and then the button would be done. And then it would probably pull the shirt and then another button and so on and so forth. I'm not sure how it works, but you know I love inventions. And it's probably, well, well forgotten. We don't even take it into consideration that this button thing that we always do, okay, put on the button and whatever each and every day in our shirt and stuff. We don't even think about the guy in 1854 who created this invention to mass produce this sewing machine that put buttons on shirts. So congrats. And I'm not even going to drink to that shit because I love inventions. All right. To Charles Miller, we're drinking for you and your inventions on how to sew buttons. Oh, that's so good. It's got a really nice um, flow going on. As you drink it, you definitely taste a lot of high hops going on. But then it's got a nice subtle lemon flavor. All right, good old Charles Miller. <laughs> yeah, I just, for me, there's a couple of things I really like. I like monster movies. I like uh, baseball. And I love inventions. <laughs> anyway, moving right on. On this day in history, March 7th. 1857, okay? Not the only guy responsible for Miller Beer. <laughs> yeah. 1857, <clears throat> baseball decides on nine innings that will constitute as an official game, not nine runs. Okay. Wow. There's our baseball trivia. Now, why is this significant? Okay, he probably did not have a wife to sell for him. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But, you know, it, so... Cheers to Charles Miller for being lonely and thinking up shit. All right, so, well, hey, guys, maybe I'll come up with an invention. I don't have a wife. Maybe I'll, f I'll think of something. <laughs> anyway, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, guys, on this day in history in 19, 1857, baseball decided that, you know what, we're going to go with nine innings. Why is that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why is that important? Because before they didn't have any time. Okay, they just played and maybe they got the nine runs and, you know, the, when it got dark out, the game was over. Or, you know, looking back on it, they got together and the commissioner and a couple other teams and owners of teams said, you know what, there's nine players on a team. Let's go ahead and make it an even uh, equal 
to nine players and let's make it nine innings. Now we know exactly how long a baseball game, well not exactly, but we know when a baseball game will end with a winner. If you play nine innings. Before it wasn't that way. It was like if you got the nine runs. Well, what if you were playing for three days like cricket? Or what if you were playing for only 20 minutes? Okay? There's been a lot of teams to rack up nine runs in the first inning. Does that mean the game is over? What about people for attendance that pay the money? And then all of a sudden your team, like the Yankees, better up, shellac nine runs in a, on the Red Sox. Screw you, Frank. <laughs> Just kidding. And, uh, and the game's over. Well, baseball came in and said, you know what? We're going to make it a rule that it's nine innings. So there you go. That's what happened on this day in history in 1857. On this day in history, on March 7th, 1876, Alexander Graham Bell receives a patent for the telephone in the U.S. Awesome. Okay? Now, think about it. This is where we're at. 1876. It's getting tough in here. <laughs> Sorry, Frank. Nothing but love and respect. Um, you know, BC is a big, huge Red Sox fan, so you'll get along with him well. But on 1876, also, uh, Alexander Graham Bell receives a patent for the telephone. And this was a big race. This was a race to get that in. Okay? I gotta be like a submarine and have another torpedo. <laughs> yes. It's like three or four. I love it. And, um, yeah, it, it, it's pretty interesting to see how far we've we've come. Because... 1876, oh, let's see, 24, you know, all right, we're looking at not too long ago. You know, now we're walking around with a frigging computer. Now, calling somebody the old way is non-existent. For what we have now, and I've referenced the phone a few times, goes all the way back to Alexander Graham Bell receiving that patent for the old phone that you see like, hello, yes, this is Alexander Graham Bell. Yes, I was wondering um, if you might come on over and uh, bring your wash as my maid is going to put out your sheets. I don't know what the hell they would talk about, but whatever. He, he had the patent for the telephone, and that's what started and evolved to where we're at now. Where we basically carry around a thousand dollars, at least, right, of a supercomputer. Anyway, thought that might be worth mentioning. On this day in history, and March 7th, okay, the Beatles, oh, in 1962, made their very first broadcasting debut on the BBC radio. It was for a little TV show where they did four songs. So, um, pretty cool, little pop culture. If you like the Beatles, real quick, what would you rather? You are Rolling Stones or you are Beatles? What, 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 what you got? Your Rolling Stones or your Beatles? That's a tough one because I like the Rolling Stones a lot. And I love the Beatles. But I just feel like some of the Rolling Stones songs after, if you go 10 for 10, and then after that, Beatles. Always the Be Oh, Fontana! Ring it in with the Stones. <clears throat> I think equally you can find 10 songs from the Stones and 10 songs from the Beatles that are really good, on par, awesome songs. But then after, then it separates. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe your ear is different. I'd like to hear. That's just a quick little plug-in as we do this day in history. All right, and to round it out, okay, here we go. This one is for your sports fans out there, especially you Europeans. I'm with Jens on that. On this day in history, on March 7th, 2009, despite being only 17 years old, 17, I was still in high school, Brazilian soccer star, Brazilian soccer star Neymar makes his professional debut for Santos. I don't know what that means. I know Neymar; he's filthy dirty at the game of soccer. He's um, I don't know, probably in his mid thirties now. Well, two thousand nine, so he would. <laughs> let's figure that out. Yeah, so he would be a, a, a late twenty. Sorry, um, feeling the booze. All right, but yeah, he, he debuted it. He debuted. Hello, Eric, and welcome to the show. But um, yeah, that's what happened on this day in history. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this segment. I hope you had fun. hope you learned something new on this day in history. Guys, if you're just hopping on, like Pat Fontana, Rick, this is what we're drinking. It's this awesome label. Welcome to the show. It's called Raised by Wolves. It's by Paperback Brewing Company. It is a West Coast IPA. We got 15 people. Guys, I'm going to 
put this out there right now. Yes, Calvin's back. Please, let's try to get 30 people next week. 30 people. So spread the word. Spread it. Go and tell people to hop on. Even if they hop on for like 15 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. Just tell them to, to, to hop on the show next Sunday. Let's see. Wonder Strudel's here. Let's see if we can get 30 people in the room. I love it when the energy is full. We got 15 right now. We were getting close to that. But I want to really see from you guys. If you could put it out there. Just just try to tell whatever whoever you can. Put it out there. Post it. Share it. Let people know. I'm going to have some sweet beers. I might even bring another paperback back on the show next week. But let's see if we can't get... 30 people in the room next week. And if we do, if we get 30 people, we're bringing shots out. Guys, that's what we're drinking. Raised by Wolves from Paperback. It's a delicious West Coast style IPA. Really enjoying it. We're breaking records here. We're going to go the longest we've ever gone on this show. How about it? Why not? Let's do it. You need to do some dancing ladies. You can call my friend here too who's listening. Yes! Welcome your friend. You know, I would love to have some dancing ladies. And maybe we will one day. Um, I'm not opposed to that. I like dancing ladies. <laughs> Believe in the 30. Wonder Strudel. Let's do it. I'm going to push for 30, guys. I'm about 81 subscribers away from 5,000. That is a huge benchmark. And considering I've done it in about two years, two and a half, no, about two years and two months organically, that's a huge mark for me. It's a huge milestone. Also brings uh, a lot of stuff, you know, behind the scenes for me. Stuff like uh, sponsorships and uh, ability to get the coloring book out. So please spread the word. All right, moving on. Now we're going to go into what are you reading? What are you watching? This is what I'm reading. You guys ever hear um, Who Moved Your Cheese? Or Was that the book? Well... Uh, who Moved Your Cheese? And uh, this book is a continuation. It's written by Deepak Malhotra, who is a heart you deserve much more. Thank you, Wonder Strudel. You know, it's one of those things where a lot of people say that. You deserve more, you work hard, you put out good content, all that kind of thing. Nobody owes me shit. I owe it on myself to continue to work hard. And through time and discovery... I think that I'll continue to grow the audience I'm looking for. Thank you, Pat, Rick. I mean, I really think that, uh, and, and I and I, I do appreciate that, Wonder Strudel. I, you know, that that encourages me, like you wouldn't believe. That really makes me feel strong and continue to pursue it because this isn't hard. This isn't easy. This is hard, man. And um, going and having a full time job where I work 50 hours a week, you know, squeezing all this stuff in. Much love, right back to you. It'll it'll happen. But we have to continue to do it. And I owe it to myself to continue to work hard. And and that's who it's on. You know, if I continue to put out good content, it may take longer. But um, organically, and uh, when I get there, it's going to feel so damn good. And I appreciate you guys from the very beginning. But this is what I'm reading. It is called, I Moved Your Cheese. Okay? The book is, Who Moved Your Cheese? He's... This is a spin-off of it, written by a different author. And if you've ever read Who Moved My Cheese, it was about 20 years ago. And it was basically about <clears throat> how sometimes in life, circumstances and changes happen. And we have to learn to adapt to them. We have to make changes off of those situations that we're not particularly aware of until they actually happen. And we go ahead and we change our life and we go on living the way and accepting that change. But this book right here, I Moved Your Cheese, is an interesting perspective. Because it says right there on the label, for those who refuse to live as mice in someone else's maze. And it's basically questioning, no, no, no. You don't have to accept those changes. You can understand them. <laughs> we get through it. Yes, thank you. You don't have to accept those changes. Continue to pursue what you think is right. And don't, don't listen to those changes. Not in a defiant, like, um, revolutionary way. But understand that those changes may have ha ha happened, but you don't exactly have to accept them. And that isn't the creation of your life. Long, long time have not seen one thing. Byron, 
I don't know if I know what that means. Um, long time I have not seen one thing. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but oh, but thank you, my friend. Um, but yeah, so it's 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 just really really interesting to read this book. It's a light read. It's um, always good to grab other people's perspectives. Okay, I think you that. Oh, don't worry, buddy. Don't worry. You want it. Byron. Oh, I can't reach it right now, Baro. I can't reach it, buddy. I promise you. All right. So, 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 what I was saying before is like, it's always interesting to to read. Really immerse yourself and immerse yourself in three different ways. <laughs> Don't worry, Baro. Immerse yourself in listening. Okay, listening is is very important. Like. You know, you should definitely listen to uh, watching stuff, okay, and reading stuff. Because you never know when your mind is going to interpret and connect to something. You could watch something over there and you connect with it. Whether it's on YouTube, whether it's with me, whether it's with something else. It doesn't have to be somebody that's profound and famous. That's the great thing about it. You just connect with it. You saw it, you watched it, and boom, okay. You heard it or you listened to it. Some kind of podcast. Maybe you're driving down the road. You listen to the podcast. Oh, I get that. That, that would make sense to me. I'm going to apply that to my life. Or you read it. Okay? You read shit like this. These motivational or... This isn't even a motivational. This is just an understanding book. But um, definitely immerse yourself in reading, listening, and watching. Okay? And I guarantee you'll get further. You'll understand things. Or whatever you're trying to get. This isn't the quote of the week either, by the way. The quote of the week is going to be fun. All right, so what am I watching? Guys, I can't get enough of it. I got to tell you, I love Bill Pullman. And I'm watching season three on, gosh, I forget now, Amazon. No, it is USA, but it's on Netflix. And it is The Sinner. I just started season three. It's these, uh, I don't know what it is. It, 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 Bill Pullman, um, the subtle acting that is going on in this thing about detective and mystery or whether it's the New York small town. Oh, the beard. I didn't even know. <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, I don't know. The beard is for a roll, so it will be shaved a little bit. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. But yeah, season three, The Sinner. If you haven't checked out season one or two, watch those first. It's incredible. Uh, Jessica Biel, um, Bill Pullman, it's just a phenomenal uh, mystery, um, dark small town in New York. I think that's what I really like about it. I can identify with that. Um, it's just really a good show, and I suggest you watching it. Guys, we're about to slug this down. I'm going to give it a score, and then we're out of here. Um, paperback, you really killed it. This is awesome. Is the actor an independent? Yeah. Yep. All right, here we go. That is delicious. Thanks for the tip. Yeah, check it out, gents. Let me know what you think. Watch the first season first. It's like this twist of mystery and Jessica Biel. Gotta watch it. Your honor. <laughs> All right, delicious beer. Let's go to the scorecard. Really enjoyed it. All right, taste. I mean, me and Tenacious Freak have been volleying, going back and forth, back and forth about what my favorite beer is. Murder Among Mormons. Ooh, I just, you know what, Aquanuts, I got I to gotta commend you. You're always on it. The minute a new something comes out, you're on it. I just seen it. I, I um, You know, I hate to, to watch murderous real shit, but, I, but it is interesting because people are affected by it. Families have been... Uh, you know, affected by it. It's sad, but it is interesting. It's an interesting perspective. Um, what do you guys think? I'm, I'm, I'll probably, I'll try to get into that next week. All right, but now we're going to be doing this one. I'm going to be giving it a score. Never heard about that, but it's on Netflix. Raised by Wolves, West Coast IPA. That's why I got the show late. <laughs> That's awesome, Rick. All right, taste phenomenal. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. It, 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 was, it was juicy. It was hoppy. It had a light hint of fruitness to it. Just the way I like an IPA. Really just perfect. It's strong. 
It's a 6.6, so you got to like that. And like I said, when something is juicy, like it's got a lot of flavor to it, the IPA is hoppy, I'm in. I'm totally in. Where do they hide the bodies if they have no... <laughs> I'm going to give it a score of a 4.5. 4.5, brilliant taste. Really loved it. Now, here's where we're going to get into the next one, which is the price. Now, the price for this can was expensive. I probably went over my limit. Because I bought it at Sully's gas station, maybe that had an effect on it. But it was $5.29. Much more than I'm used to paying. Now, if I go to the paperback brewery, one, what is it, 16 ounce? One pint is probably going to be anywhere from $8 to $12.00 coming right out of the tap. So, not a bad comparison when you compare it to that, but I'm comparing uh, the can to the price. And I like my price point to be somewhere around 350 for a can like that, especially all the beers that I've already previously uh, reviewed. But, you know, maybe it had something to do with that I bought it at a gas station, maybe it had something to do with because this is such a small brewery in Glendale, uh, uh, Los Angeles. I don't know, but I felt like the price point wasn't the best. It was a little high. Like I said, if you're going to go out and you're going to buy six of them, right? If you buy six of them, you're talking about with tax and deposit, thirty-five to almost forty dollars a six-pack. Is it worth it? I don't know. I'm going to spend that at a bar, but you're probably only going to get to four drinks at a bar. So. But you're in the bar. You're helping pay the rent. And especially at this point in time, I don't mind going out and supporting small breweries like that. Nevertheless, I don't think the price point was great. That's why the beer was good, but I don't think it was great. And that's why I'm going to give it a 3.0. Not the best price. Now the design. <laughs> Let's get into this. All right. Very cool that they just basically print out stickers that's the way they're going if you take a look at this if this was laid flat right it's just a sticker on a cheap silver can which is kind of cool it's kind of genius because you can spend more money on the art which they did rather than imprinting it like with glass imprints and things like that so that's cool and i don't mind that and it's poured fresh whatever but check this out i mean that's cool raised by wolves and the wolves being the TVs, right? Okay, the things that I've always said on my channel that, look, the reason I do this, the reason I have so many different shows, the reason I have so much like uh, reading and uh, food and travel and beer and like the reason I do this is because I want to produce more than I consume. Okay, I don't want to be raised by the wolves of the media. Okay, and I think that's a, I think that's a great spin. I love the font. I love the color. <clears throat> yeah, the label is beautiful, right? Drunatic, it drew me to it. And wait till you see some of the other ones. I really was like, what's that? I'm like looking through, what's that? Okay, you know, pretty much really cool. And then they got a baby there with the TV. I think that's bitching. I think it's really cool. And I'm going to give it a pretty good score. I'm going to give it the design of 4.5. 4.5 is an awesome score, almost the highest you can get. Accessibility. Now, for me here in Los Angeles, I bet you if I start looking for this stuff, I bet you I can find it all over the place. I bet you um, if I drive 15 minutes down the road, I'm at the actual brewery. But for you guys, it's not, not going to be very accessible. You ain't going to be able to find it in Denmark. You're probably not going to find it in Asia. No way in Africa, and probably very doubtful, other than maybe a small little tiki tack shop in Mexico, you're not going to find it in South America. Or, you know, I guess Mexico would be considered North America, but I'm talking about below the United States. So, not a very good accessible beer. I hope that this brewery is exactly what I'm looking for. Because, like I said, it's a cool spot. I like being close to it. I, I think I've been close to it and not even known it. Okay? But it's not very accessible to the world. So that's why I'm going to give it the 
just below par, the even par accessibility of a 2.5, which really sucks because if this beer was all over the place, this would be a knockout, okay? Now, the TMD X Factor, the TMD X Factor, all this stuff considered, all this stuff brought in there. I mean, let's take a look. Awesome message <laughs> with, with the subliminal um, labeling, colorful. I found it at a gas station. I found out that I, I didn't ever knew about paperback brewing. That's right down the road. Label is insane. Dude, wait, Tenacious Freak. I got four more of these guys, and they are all equally as cool. And um, I like that they, I like that they make an artist do this. This was not just printed out, which is cool, but it just wasn't printed out. It was it was it was drawn out. It was thought out. It was made by an artist. Okay, the fact that it's 15 miles from my home, even better. The fact that it's a delicious beer, amazing. The fact that it's a 6.6%. Awesome. The fact that it's an IPA and it's just the IPA I like. It's just perfect hoppiness, the skunkiness, the sweetness, the friggin' powerfulness. Awesome. So the TMD factor, I'm not pulling back any punches. I'm telling you, this beer is delicious. This beer is good. I'm going to give it a 4.0. A 4.0 is an awesome score. This beer, wow, can it beat the highest scoring ever? Can it do it? Can it do it? Let's see what we got. Let me count this sucker up. Ooh, it doesn't do it. It doesn't do it, but it comes pretty damn close. And that is only because of the accessibility. But guys, I'm telling you, the Raised by Wolves IPA, West Coast style IPA by Paperback Brewing Company scores an 18.5. Ah, awesome. Just an outstanding beer. Definitely going to revisit this beer. This is a delicious one. I really want, I, I kind of want another one. After the show, I'm going to do a lot of metadata. I got to go back and fill all the stuff out. I'll probably actually drink a couple other beers. I wish I had another one of these. I totally wish I had another one of these. This one is good. I don't know if I would go back to it again. And like I said, it's more of a dinner beer. It scored a 17.5. This scored an 18.5. Still very good scores. The par for us was 17. So both of them reached the par. Or the bar. You call it the par or the bar? I think par is golf. Bar is anything else. Anyway, doesn't matter. Delicious beers. Thank you so much for hanging me, hanging with me. Let me leave you with the quote. It's very easy. It's very simple. And it was done by Napoleon Bonaparte. Okay, did I say that right? I don't even know how to pronounce his last name. Because I was always referred to as Napoleon, the French general. Okay, and he said this. On victory, you deserve beer. On defeat, you need it. Right? And that's it. Think about it. I, you know, it's one of those things that when I read this quote, I was like, yeah, you know what? When I win something, whether it's a role or back in my playing days of baseball when I won. Or, you know, just have a good show. I deserve beer. Okay? <laughs> Thank you, Aquanauts. You know, you deserve it. Okay? But on defeat. And we all get defeated. Right? I'm not going to sit up here on my hot horse, on my soapbox. We all get defeated. No matter what that is. That could be something, something so small in your life. Where somebody pisses you off at the grocery store. And you feel like that's a defeat. Or you feel like, you know, you put everything into your work. Whatever your job, whatever your profession is, and you didn't get that promotion, that's a defeat. Doesn't mean you can't overcome those things. They're nonsense. They're in the past, right? But, but, you might need a beer. You definitely might need it. Yes, exactly. Like Tenacious Freak said, from failure, you learn. So, let this be a moment to understand that even Napoleon, 500 years ago, understood that when we won, we won a battle or we won some kind of political push, some kind of thing that he was dealing with. Come home and your wife isn't bad with the paper boy. Never had that happen. Don't know what that's like. Um, you know, you deserve a beer. But also, when you fuck up, when you have something that's, you know, doesn't go your way or you fail, whatever, however you interpret it, you know, you just might need one because you suck down a beer you have a good time, your body starts to relax, 
you start to rationalize, you start to rethink things, you start to understand it, and um, that <laughs> I love it, Frank. That better one. Oh, this is you guys are killing it, man. You guys are killing it. So yeah, I just thought I would leave that one with you. Please, thank you so much for hopping on. Let's try to get to 30. Spread the word next week. Tell whoever you got to tell to grab a beer, hop on. First, yes, Wonder Strudel. Very good. Hop on at this segment at 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Let's see if we can't get some of the old people back, like Aston. Let's see if we can't get Uncle John on the show. Let's see if we can't get Cousin Brian on the show. Let's try to bring 30 people onto the show. It'll be epic. Please, I know that you guys are busy. I know that you have things. I know that life goes and, 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 and you know at your at your pace. So trust me when I thank you, freak. When I when I know that you're here, it means everything. But I'm asking you, please, let's try to push this shit. Let's try to get 30 people on this show. Uh, thank you so much, Jordan Tech. Okay, so thank you. Have a great week, Dad. If you're still here, I hope you're doing good. I love you. And uh, say hello to everyone. Everybody else, thank you so much. Thank you always. It's Wonder Strudel. Thank you. I'll try to grow it out. It might be gone in a little bit. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great week. Tenacious Freak, thank you so much. I wish you all a great week. Whatever you do, wherever you are, have a great week. Bye, goodbye, Barrow. Goodbye, Aquanuts. Tenacious Freak, a little dancing, a little beer. Greg Z. Frank, I know you're out there. If I've missed you, Drunatic, thank you so much. I hope that you guys are all there. Yes, you guys are awesome. You made my day. Have a great week. I'm Travel Man Dan. And remember, it's a big world out there. Make sure you see every bit of it.